Some are within the cycle, others are off the cycle, but all focusing on one goal to occupy the number one seat in the state. General elections are conducted every four years, but off cycle elections have also created default timetable of FINEC as courts overturned some election results in states after petitions were submitted by the aggrieved candidates or parties. Currently, Nigeria has eight off cycle governorship elections Anambra, Bielsa, Kogi, Edo, Ondo, Ekiti, Osu, and Imo states. Anambra State pioneered the off cycle election syndrome in Nigeria in 2006 when former Governor Peter Obi, who contested under ABGA, was sworn in. Obi emerged as the governor after contesting the result of the 2003 that installed Dr. Chris Ngige of the PDP. Now, Bielsa, Imo, and Kogi states are on for that moment of delivery. For instance, Bielsa state held its first off-cycle election in 2007. Timi Press Silva of the PDP then was declared governor, but Ebitimi Angbare of the defunct Action Congress of Nigeria ACN challenged the election result before the tribunal and he lost. Losing at the tribunal, Ibitimi Angbare petitioned the Court of Appeal in Port Harcourt to overturn the prior verdict. The judgment of the appeal court prompted INEC to organize a new poll in the state in 2008. Timi Pre Silva won and was declared elected in the newly held election, which disrupted the state's election calendar. In Kogi State, the governorship election was held on April 14, 2007, and PDP's Ibrahim Idris was declared the winner. Idris main challenger Abubakar Audu of the ANPP petitioned the Kogi State Election Tribunal to oppose the verdict. He claimed his name had been improperly left out the list of candidates meant to run for the office. He took the case all the way to the appellate court. Although the election was nullified, calling for the conduct of a fresh election, Ibrahim Idris won the re-election as Kogi State's governor on March 29, 2008. In 2019, Imo State joined the off-cycle election when Governor Ope Ozodima of the APC contested the result of Emika Eidua, the PDP candidate. The legal battle moved from the election tribunal to the Supreme Court, Ope Ozodima was inaugurated as the governor of the state on January 14, 2020, after the Supreme Court declared him the winner. The political cloud now hovering around Bielsa, Imo, and Kogi states. 52 candidates jostling for three seats, and 5.1 million voters will decide their fate. Einek insists the process will be fair. We have no candidate in the election. The choice of who becomes the governor of Belsa State should be left to voters in Belsa State. And our assurance is that we will protect the process. And for the security agencies, no cause for alarm. Mr. President has given his orders and instructions. He said he will want to see free, fair, credible elections. And this is going to be the first election that he is going to be under his watch. He said that we should take this message to INEC and to Nigerians that he is going to be very much supportive, available to support you to make sure that Nigerians will have a free and fair election. Um, the security agencies are ready for this election. We have received all this information from INEC, which has informed us on where to deploy to at, during this election. We have carried out our threat assessment and that has informed us in the, in, with respect to allocation of our resources and deployment of our men. The, all the security agencies are collaborating strongly to ensure that um, this election is violent free. My appeal to people who may want to come out to make trouble during this election is to stay away from this election because there will be no, no place for them to operate in this election. We are aware of negative mobilization by some supporters of some candidates and we are already monitoring them. 
We are ready for them for this election. I appeal to them to stay away from this election. Those who want to come out and disrupt the election should just stay away. And I appeal to the electorates to come out MRs and to come and cast their votes during this election. So I want to assure Nigerians, especially those in those three uh, states for the off-season election, uh, not to have any fear or any doubt that the armed forces and the police and other security agencies will be fully on ground. Every Nigerian we're sure is tired of elections with violence. At this, we intend to make it different. We want to do things differently. We want, at the end of it, every Nigerian should be proud first to be a Nigerian, first to understand that elections are now free and fair. We want everybody who wins an election should be happy that he won, and he won very well without any intimidation. All eyes on INEC, the security agencies and the electorate, as the Bielsa, Imo, and Kogi elections may give an outlook to the Ondo and Edo 2024 of cycle Four. governorship elections. Mie Ogede, NTNews. You're welcome to the off cycle election studio in from the Nigerian Television Authority, and we're bringing you detailed coverage of the elections as the results continue to trickle in. But first, my name is Jumma Yasuf. Let's take this report. As INEC has received reports from its officials in Kogi State on incidences of electoral malpractice, particularly the incident of results sheets completed before voting. Reports indicate that the incident occurred in Adavi, Ajakuta, Ogori, Magongo, Okehi, and Okene local government areas. The most serious incidents occurred in Ogori, Magongo, affecting nine of ten registration areas. Statement by INEC National Commissioner Mohammed Kudu Haruna says this is entirely unacceptable. Any result not emanating from the Commission's process and the polling units will not be accepted. Consequently, the election in the nine wards in Ogori, Magongo, local government, Eni, Okibo, Okesi, Iletteju, Ayirumi, Ugugu, Obinoin, Ogbagben, and Oturu is at this moment suspended. The incidences in the other local government areas are being thoroughly investigated, and the outcome, including the way forward, will be announced in the next 24 hours. And that's when that's when we'll be getting reports from Kogit for us to understand actually what happened. And I still have in the studio here Nick Dazang, former director of voter education, independent national electoral commission. He's seated here with me in the studio. <laughs> We're continuing the conversation actually. <laughs> yeah, yes. When Yaga Africa raised the alarm this mm. afternoon on, you know, you know pre-filled forms with names and, you know, registration, what was your reaction actually? Did you think action will be taken? Yes, I, I expected action to be taken because um, Yaga Africa is one of the serious civil society organizations in the country. And um, from uh, my interaction with them, they are not a frivolous organization. Uh, and before they make any complaints of this nature, they must have had their facts. And in terms of coverage, in terms of um, observation, uh, they deploy nearly, I think, about the largest number of uh, uh, observers on the ground, you know, before the election, during the election. And, um, the, the, you know, that, that's what we call long-term observation. And normally they, they, they assess the situation on the ground using their long-term observers who are in the field ahead of the conduct of the election. So they know the field very well, you know, and um, I think apart from annex staff, I can say that they are about one of the most informed, you know, uh, uh, civil society organizations. And, uh, and therefore, the commission itself takes whatever report they file seriously. And uh, those of us who are, in, who are involved in the process also, you know, um, take whatever they file uh, seriously. I, I recall that on a number of occasions during the conduct of uh, general elections and off-cycle elections, before I, I, I get out of the office to any studio, mm. I must make sure that I check the report of Yaga Africa, CDD, and Situation Room. 
and then uh, probably TMG. And then I compare it with our own report from INEC. And then it gives me a, a complete picture. And, and so that when I even go out and people are asking me, I'm not taking unawares. Okay. So to that extent, they have been very credible. Uh, they have been a very serious organization. And I, I don't think they would have filed a report of that nature if they didn't have their facts right. But at the point that they filed the reports, I mean the report, the, 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 the incident was not as extensive as this. But given the fact that it is extensive, means that, that the, the, the outcome of the investigation may affect quite a substantial number of votes, uh, which is why ADEC has to take its time to really investigate, reconfirm, and then in addition to suspending the, uh, the, those votes, like I said earlier on, they need also to you know, visit sanctions on those who perpetrate or who perpetrated that kind of action because if you don't do that now it's a new 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 trend if you don't check it now it will replicate itself as we've seen in such vices as uh, vote buying but is this the first time this is happening yes this is about the first time okay uh, at least it's been reported and it's been detected uh on other occasions we've not had this kind of incident okay. but you know as things begin to rear their ugly heads you check them immediately, and that is the way to go. Okay, you know, we always talk about voter apathy during elections, and we have uh, 5.41 million eligible voters that have registered for elections in these three states. Yes. But the numbers are not showing up. Why is that? Are the people well, just not, you know, feel that they will have any impact? Yes, I think uh, there are a number of factors, okay. one of which arising from the conduct of the 2023 elections. And we've said it earlier on that, um, if you recall, in fact, from the figures that ANEC reeled out before the conduct of the elections, more persons of youthful age, you know, registered to vote in the, in, in, in the 2023 general elections. Not only that, what was significant, you know, is that most of them were voting for the first time. And then... Some of them felt that ANEC did not live up to its promises, particularly with uploading polling unit results on the ANEC results viewing portal. So they were disappointed. And these kinds of people are likely to keep away. You know, at such a time when they see improvement in the performance of ANEC, then their confidence will be earned. It will, you know, the, the trust that they had before which they feel is, 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 is been misplaced, can now be, you know, retraced. That's number one. Number two, uh, these uh, three states in which the elections took place have antecedent for violence. Yes. A lot of violent activity took place. A lot of negative campaigns took place. To the extent that, you know, the voters were afraid to come out, yes. particularly in Imo and Kogi. You know, people were afraid. Look at what even happened in just within the neighborhood of uh, 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 within the, the, the city center. Yes. You know, when the polls opened, you could see security agencies, I mean agents, but you couldn't cite the voters. Yes. You could also see annex staff and security agents at some of the polling units, but the voters were timid. They were not confident to come out yes. until afraid. much later. They were afraid. Mm. So there was fear, particularly in these three states. And then, of course, we've always said that the political class has not helped the democracy project okay. by delivering good governance to Nigerians. Mm. People expect that when you vote someone into a government, he will use the opportunity to improve his well-being. Yes. But you know, the, the, the elections have not translated into improvement in the welfare of Nigerians. And we have seen a progressive decline in terms of the delivery of good governance to Nigerians from 1999 to this time. And this discourages voters. And this also out. discourages voters. Mm. So when you put all this together and this feeling that my vote may not count, mm. you know, then persuades people not to turn out. 
And um, if you, you study the figures from 1999, you could see that progressively there has been a decline. decline yes. And that should, con should be concerning, not only to INEC, but for the, for, the, for the political parties and for the political class. Hmm. And, and that should instruct them to do things, you know, that will gladden the minds of the electorate. Hmm. And you could see in, 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 in the Central and West African regions that whereas in the uh, 1990s, you know, Western democracies were celebrating the extent to which other former dictatorships were embracing democracy. democracy yes. To the extent that there was a, a bestseller written by Francis Fukuyama, The End of History and the Last Man. The last man. And what he was trying to celebrate was the, the, the triumph of democracy over dictatorship. That now, finally, democracy had triumphed. It has succeeded, you know, over dictatorial regimes. And that democracy was the way to go. But are the people satisfied with democracy now? Because let's look at the voter, you know, the imperative of voter education by the political class, you know, of cycle elections. Most people say they don't, they are not even aware there's going to be an election, you know, going on and um, they prefer to go about their business. How imperative is voter education to the electorate? Well, you, you can never have enough voter education from the little experience I've had. And um, unfortunately, you know, the, the, the political parties and the politicians leave most of voter education to INEC and the media and civil society. They forget that, first of all, they, they are the major beneficiaries of this process. And it is their remit to explain to Nigerians, you know, what their ideology or whatever their ideas are why they want to capture power, what they want to do. They, they need to market themselves to Nigerians. And that means that they need to educate Nigerians about the process. You know, they, they need to mobilize Nigerians. If you look at what happened in the last elections in the United States, the Democratic and Republican parties were even providing meals to voters. They were bossing them to polling units. You know, we're not saying that you should bribe voters to vote for you. But you could see the commitment in terms of trying to get the support of voters to come out. But we don't see the same kind of commitment on the part, on the part of political parties, you know, uh, in Nigeria. And once somebody gets elected, he forgets to relate with his constituents. In other jurisdictions, what happens is that you, frequent, you go back to your constituents. After you've been elected, there is a platform on which you are elected. Yes. There were ideas, you know, for which you were elected. And you had promised that you were going to do this and this and this and that for your constituents. Now it is your responsibility to report back to your constituents and say, I'll be able to achieve this. And then for this that we have marked to do on the platform of my party, we've not been able to do this because of this. Mm -hmm. So that you carry people along, you, you need you to have a contact with yes, the people with them. itself. But that, in our own case, there is no, there is a, a disconnect. After the election, there's always a disconnect. Yes. Okay, we'll, I'll come back to you, but let me take this report. And against the expectation of many, the 2023 Imo State off-cycle governorship election has come and gone without recording major challenges. Kinsley on a new reports that... The electoral exercise, however, recorded minor setbacks in some polling centers across the state. Polling centers visited by NTNS crew in the three senatorial districts and 27 local community areas of the state as INEC officials, voters, and security agents conducted themselves in most acceptable manners. Another success story of the election is that both the accreditation and voting exercise was smooth and is free, unlike what was observed in the previous elections in the state. This positive development and the nation's electoral umpire, the voters' commendation. Anything was perfect. There was no issues. The whole materials, everything was intact. The annex should be given a thumbs up. 
you can see, you can hear, if, you, if you listen very well, you will see that there are no, no conflicts here and there. And I'm quite satisfied that um, everybody who's come here to vote has had an opportunity to vote. I want Imo to progress. Better things come for Imo State because we are suffering. Everything went peacefully. If people came in, they voted, they were very happy. There was no problem at all. So I'm very happy and very pleased. The off-cycle governorship election, however, fed the expectations of the electorate over late arrival of INEC officials and materials in some rural areas of the state. Another ugly narrative trailing the conduct of the election was low turnout of voters that generally greeted the exercise in most polling units as against the official record number of registered voters in those places, as well as the alleged buying of votes by some political parties. In a worry, Kingsley on new NTA News. Thank you, Kingsley. And I have Emmanuel Njoku, election observer, public policy analyst, and director of democracy and governance connected development. He's joining me via Zoom from Lokoja. Uh, Mr. Emmanuel, let's have your reaction to the suspended elections in some lo local government areas in Kogi and your assessment of the elections generally in that area. Please try to unmute your audio so I can hear you. Yeah, can, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, well, so far, uh, it, uh, unlike uh, what many people anticipated, it was, uh, it was a calm and uh, peaceful election in Kogi State. Of course, everybody anticipated there was going to be violence. And I mean, you don't blame anybody based on history and what has happened in the past elections. Everybody expected so. Uh, but however, we'll give it to the Nigerian police force who uh, ensured that uh, uh, the voters were protected in this election. Uh, some people may say that there was over deployment. But then again, because we, if you are aware, the Nigerian police deployed 40,000 personnel in Kogi State, just the Nigerian police alone, not to talk of uh, the civil defense, the DSS, the, Niger the Nigerian army. But bottom line, it was a peaceful election. Uh, election deployment and opening of polls happened early in more than 90% of um, the polling is where our observers were deployed. And um, that was also not a surprise to us because last night I was at um, uh, two, I was at two uh, rack centers. Uh, one of them is um, the Crowder Memorial College and the other one is the St. Mary, St. Mary LEA Primary and Nursery School. These are rack centers at 9 p.m. yesterday uh the spos had concluded you know distribution of sensitive and non-sensitive materials to their presiding officers as at 9 9 pm yesterday and had concluded training and the refresher course training for use of beavers and the electoral process so at that point we knew that elections will start early in the next day and it happened just exactly so i want to comment INEC, uh because i believe uh, we believe that INEC stepped up the game today in the process of deployment, in the handling of the devices, in the whole process. And as you can see, as we speak right now, uh, for Kogi election, I think about 80% of the result has already been uploaded. Uh, but however, the downside to all of these things is the embarrassing situation that happened uh, uh, in the five local governments of Adavi, Okene, Okehi, uh, Mangono and uh, one other local government, which INEC has reacted to. As a matter of fact, one of our observers sent us uh, one of those results in the morning uh, when people were just about to start voting. We saw one of those uh, results in Mangono uh, local government area in the morning. And we can clearly tell that that was an original result because on Thursday, we were at the CBN headquarters when they wreck and the national commissioner from Abuja and the uh, police commissioners were to inspect the sensitive materials and have them deployed. And so I saw when the REC was signing the form EC8Bs and EC8Cs. So I can tell when I saw that result that this is original. It was not some artificial intelligence uh, kind of thing. We will we, we, we'll publish it on our user pay platform and also tweet it and escalate it to INEC. So it's good that INEC has responded uh, the way they've responded. If not for this situation that happened in these uh, five uh, local governments, which INEC has cancelled nine of registration areas in one of these local government areas, we, we, we were anticipating 
that before daybreak, that um, probably would have known or seen, Aine could have declared and returned the winners of this election, like we saw at the AKT and the Oshun governorship election in 2022. Because what the implication of what you are seeing on the IREV means, when you see 80%, 85% of results uploaded already, it simply means that collation at the world level collation center, and that is the, that is the most important link in the collation process. Uh, because that's where I understand that the INEC RAC tech support team come and then sure, that's where they do the, the, the basic work of confirming that the number of people uh, that, that, were by, that were electronically accredited by the beavers matches with the number of uh, people that voted in election in the form EC80, that's the polling unit results. So once they get it right at that level of the World Collation Center, the local government collation center and the state collation center becomes much easier and much faster. But with what has happened in um, Kogi State in these five local governments, and I next they are giving 24 hours, the implication is that um, I suspect that the Kogi election may be inconclusive. And I say this because I next said that this occurrence has happened in five local governments, but the only one they have suspended is the Mangono local government where they've said nine out of the ten registration area councils have been suspended. And in that particular local government area, the number of registered voters in that local government is about 15,833. In the particular local government, they've suspended nine of the registration areas. And you are aware that uh, PVCs collected for this election across Kogi State was 96% of uh, registered voters collected their PVCs. So if in just one of these local government areas, they've suspended 90% of the elections in the local government with about 15,800 registered voters. And mind you, this Mangono is the least populated local government in Kogi State. Okay. So if they're already looking at stepping down 13 to 14,000 uh, votes by going by the number of PVCs collected in that local government, and that is the least populated local government, what will not happen by the time IDNEC zooms in into local governments like, um, like Okene, like uh, Jokuta, like uh, Okehi, and the Adavi. And this local, these other four local governments have at least nothing less than 100,000 registered voters. I think Okene is the third uh, most populous uh, 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 local government in Kogi State, with uh, Adavi being the fifth, and with Ajokuda being the seventh most populous uh, local government area. So when you look at the population of these other four local governments that INEC is yet, that is, INEC is still investigating to be sure the number of registration areas of polling uh, units where this thing happened, it gives you that feeling that if the margin of lead of uh, the first two leading candidates in this election, if it is less than the number of people who have collected their PVCs in these local governments that will be affected, it means that INEC will have to declare this election inconclusive and set another day to come back to these areas to have an, an election. It's, it's quite a setback and uh, it's, it's quite shameful that this, this should happen. What would, what would expect INEC to do is to follow through with, their, with, with the strong statement that they've given that they are investigating. Uh, because one of the biggest challenges we see we have in Nigeria is consequence management. Many people just do things and get away with it. We would expect <clears throat> that like Ike has said, that they know the step-by-step -step process of all the materials and the deployments where it has happened. And I suspect that there is collusion in this process because this thing, it happened in five local government areas. So we're not talking about just the electoral officer, the EO of one local government area. We're talking about five EOs. I mean, so they can't just work independent of each other. It means there is a collusion between, I mean, some sort of leadership at the state level that made this happen. So we would expect INEC to come down heavy on these people for, I mean, setting us back, I mean, with, with, the, with the level of improvement that we thought we had seen in this election today, we would expect that INEC should come down heavy on, uh, on, on, on the perpetrators of this electoral fraud and have them prosecuted in, and people should be seen, they should be seen 
uh, being prosecuted. Okay, Mr. Njoku, you know, election assessment is important because it helps to ensure that the elections have integrity. Now, you're there. INEC announced the suspension of elections in those areas. What is the mood like? Knowing Kogi State, what is the mood like right now where you are? Well, it's calm in Kogi State, very, very calm and uh, very unusual because uh, in the morning hours, uh, I told uh, my team that, well, usually you don't expect violence in, uh, in elections from morning till probably around 1, 2 o'clock. The reason being that from 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, you, you start seeing who, who is getting more votes in different polling units, and that's when you now see mobilization towards violence. But nothing of such has happened. Uh, we went to one of the ward collection, uh, ward collection centers around 5 p.m. I mean, the law of security men are still all over the, all over the state, and the, the, the everywhere is calm and peaceful. I guess people are just uh, waiting uh, to see the outcome. There is no celebration from any quarter. There is nothing unusual. I mean, everywhere is just quiet and calm. Okay, Mr. Emmanuel Njoku, Election Observer, Public Policy Analyst and Director of Democracy and Governance Connected Limited. Thank you so much for coming on the Off Circle Election Studio. Uh, yes, I think you'll still be there, but I need to bring in somebody right now. Let, let, let me return to the studio where Nick Dazang is, is seated before we join our next guest. Nick Dazang, you've listened to him. He's there on the ground and um, he says Kogi is calm. Does that mm. surprise you? Well, I'm not surprised, uh, but in time past, um, the, the, the violence tends to come after the election. So, uh, but in, in this case, I think um, we, we, and given the kind of deployment and the, the security presence, uh, once we are able to go beyond today, uh, and then tomorrow when the results would have been collected and announced, I think we are, we, we are good to go. But uh, I, I think what ANEC needs to do is to act immediately over this particular uh, information. Yes. Uh, because it, it has implications for the, 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 the whoever will be declared as winner at the end of the day as he's speculating. I do not want to speculate, but um, I, I think that it is important that ANEC immediately, you know, goes to the bottom of it and then looks at the damage that has been done and then establishes when elections can take place in these particular areas uh, that are affected so that we have, we, we, we get over with the, the conduct of the election in that state in good time. Yes, and uh, you know, when we talk about security situations in, in, in places like Kogi, Imo, and um, Bayasa before the elections, we saw a lot of talk, you know, tough talk coming from the, uh, from the candidates. And um, n n one other thing that is, you know, impressive of INEC is the IRF uploading of results so fast. And mm. not much report about the Beaver's functionality. Yes, what it, what it means is that the beavers worked seamlessly uh, and that was why we didn't receive any reports about uh, its uh, malfunctioning. At the same time also, um, given the fact that most of the polling units uh, closed, you know, elections did not, you know, continue beyond 2, I mean, two, two, 2, 2, 2 even beyond 2 p.m., mm. except perhaps in a, a, a place like Ganaja, in the entire three states, most of the elections had been, con, you know, conducted and and finished with by two two p.m. So they were just waiting for the official time of two thirty, so that they would proceed to the ward collection centers. And uh, so, collection would have started very early, and <coughs> and that is why. And it is at that point of collation at the world level also that you upload the results. Mm. You know, after shooting the, the, the form EC8A, which is issued at the polling unit, you now uh, take the, the, the snapshot of that form EC8A, and then you now transmit it, you know, to the IRF. Mm. Now, uh, and, and even where you don't have a network, at that polling unit, you now move to the ward collection center, 
why you can do that. So collation started in very good time, and that explains why uh, I think even in Bielsa, uh, much earlier on they were talking about opening the state collection center at 9 p.m. today. So uh, what, what it means is that most collection centers, I mean, uh, most of the results will come in probably by, by tomorrow afternoon we should be able to know uh, the, the outcome of, of this By governorship after elections. tomorrow, you know, yes. and um, off-cycle elections usually, you know, present unique challenges in the Nigerian electoral system, just like we've seen, because this is not the first off-cycle election we're having, yes. you know, from the primaries and all that. But how important is it to address these challenges so that we can improve the credibility and effectiveness of future off-cycle elections? You know, part of, part of the challenge we always have with um, of cycle elections is that most of the factors that are likely to conspire against the conduct yeah. of peaceful, credible elections conspire. They come together. Yeah. You know, even the political parties, you, you, they will now inundate that particular state with so many big wigs. You hear of a, a campaign council made up of so many big people and, and, and that also brings its own pressure. But thankfully now we have three states. Yes. So the, the so-called uh, campaign council would have been divided into three. Mm. And that also dissolves the pressure. So I think going forward, whenever we have elections coming close, off-cycle elections coming very close, like that of Edouard Ondo in 2024, then it, it might be expedient. The commission should explore the possibility of maybe doing it simultaneously as it has done this, so that you reduce the pressure on you because once you leave it to a, a particular state or a particular constituency, you now discover that so much pressure is brought to bear on that state. And, and, and that also complicates issues for ANEC. It complicates issues for for, for other stakeholders. Let me give you another example. Um, before the conduct of these uh, elections, hotel rooms in uh, Imo and, uh, and, and Kogi were, were blocked. So a lot of, the, there were anxieties about how observers and the media and even annex staff who are going there to monitor are going to put up in hotels because they have been paid for. So, but when you have a general election, it is not possible for the parties to block all the hotels across the 20 something states in which the, states, the, 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 the elections are going to take place. And sometimes you discover that they, 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 they export talks from one state to the other. And that was why even in the deployment, the security deployment, you know, we, 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 we normally observe three cordons. The cordon around the polling unit, the cordon around maybe the ward, yeah. and then the cordon around the boundaries. So that the boundaries uh, cannot be infiltrated by people that are likely going to complicate the elections or disrupt the, 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 the elections. So, yeah. uh, but when you have most elections take in a general election, mm. you know, the, all those uh, axes of evil are spread thinly. So, and, and they are spread so thinly that the security agencies can deal with them. Exactly. You know, but <coughs> we have another guest, <laughs> Nick Dazang, waiting. He's joining us via Zoom. Is Chief Obin Nawaka, Director General Committee of Youth on Mobilization and Sensitization. He's joining us via Zoom from Oweri. Mr. Obin Nawaka, you're welcome to the Off Cycle Studios here in NTA headquarters. Well, thank you very much. Okay. And I'm so happy that you're bringing your board. Yes, and Mr. Obina, you know. Thank some, you very much. Yeah, Mr. Obina, yeah. while I was having a conversation with somebody before I came to the studio, he said, this sounds like a presidential election because this is the first time elections are holding in the north, uh, central, the south, south, and the southeast. Now, to where you are in Oweri, we've had, you know, issues of uh, voter apathy, people not really aware of the election and not coming out and then vote buying. And we would like to get 
your assertion of the election in, in Imo State uh, so far? And um, has anybody been arrested over vote buying and um, all the other issues that seems to arise usually from, from elections of this kind? And were you surprised that there was no violence actually? Well, thank you very much once again. Well, uh, just like we earlier said that uh, the elections looks like a presidential election where election is holding the north, in the south, 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 and also in the southeast. Mm. And this state that election is also holding in these three geopolitical zones are the major states that elections are very tough. If you have been following up elections, uh, conduct and election activity, from general election to the off-cycle election, you will come to understand that these three states are major key states when it comes to area of electional activities, governance, and all those stuff. So, well, uh, coming back to your question, uh, yes, um, I am in Imo State. Uh, uh, I'm also from these states. That is why you can see me. I'm also observing the elections from these states. But the special grace of God, I led a team of observers who also came to this state. We came in here about four days ago. And uh, the essence why we came here for the zone is come and carry out the pre-election activity. The essence of the pre-election activities is to enable us to ascertain the level of preparedness by the INEC, the security agencies, above, among that, the, the, the election stakeholders are serving. But when it comes to elections, it's not only INEC that is involved. We also have some key people that are also involved in election activity to ensure that election is free, fair, conducive, conclusive, and also peaceful. <coughs> the, the police, the security agency, the traditional rulers, the electorate himself. Uh, of course, we, the observers, are also part of the uh, stakeholders. Now, when it comes to the issue of voter apathy, before these elections, uh, there's a series of activities, series of sensitization that I've held. The political parties have also assisted the INEC to ensure that uh, they sensitize the electorate for them to come out in mass to vote for their respective candidates, which we also observe. And before we came down here, we have been following the event of these uh, uh, political parties, how they are also been conducting themselves. And, well, I would like to give kudos to INEC I next, actually, they prepared very well for this election. The awareness is high, and they've had a series of uh, stakeholders briefing. I next organized a briefing between the Nigerian police force, the civil society organizations, and also the media. They had interaction, which I also witnessed it uh, two days ago at the uh, uh, police command here in Oweri. I was there. The, the AIG was also there. The DRG was also there. So it was a very uh, a robust uh, engagement and a sensitization program. And INEC also had a briefing that also uh, included both uh, all the party agents, the security agencies, the traditional rulers. So INEC have had a series of engagement before they even conducted this election. But I want to say that uh, when it comes to the issue of voter apathy, the voter apathy, it is not uh, something that uh, we've not been experiencing. But it, it now depends on how we want to do what and explain or to give it back to the public. There are some areas that where people come out in mass to cast their votes. And there are some areas where people don't feel that uh, it's not the usual thing, uh, government in power and all those things. And there are some areas you go, you see that uh, uh, the people, they were ready to ensure that uh, the votes casted are also counted. So here in Nimble State, we experienced uh, a little turnout of uh, voters. People did not actually come out as expected because of, you know, uh, Imo State happens to be one of the major states in the southeast where insecurity is really confronting the state. And the electorate themselves, they are kind of a shivering, but the awareness and the sensitization really uh, helped the electorate to come out and also cast their votes. I think the, the, the turnout of electorate was highly impressive. I was also in some part of Okigwe local government, Eastern Ambon local government, Wangale local government, where I and my colleagues were also covered ex extensively. So the people there, they really came out to vote. And we drove around the highway. People were on the road, people were moving. 
Then when it comes to the issue of a, of a, a hotel not be, being filled up, being, being secured, or being reserved by the state government, all these things were just mere speculations. The so so, 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 so the, what you're saying is what you're, what you're saying is it's not true. Direction. What you're saying is it's not true. It is not true. It is not true. Yet it is not true. One of the one of the hotels that we even stayed in in, in the municipal was a very a, a very good conducive hotel, and there were still rooms for people to also come and uh, make some reservation. So many hotels they are still vacant as I speak with you. So. So all those things are speculations, all those things proper, uh, meet, uh, social media propaganda. So we are, we, are, we are shocked. So even as I speak with you, so many uh, the hotels in the municipal, in the heart beat of Oweri, they are still vacant. So there's nothing like reservation and all those things. So I'm so surprised that uh, people will just be spreading rumors that all those things. But why I'm not even that surprised, but so many things are still meant to be done by the government. And by the people, they need to engage people before the election. Election should not be all about people going to ballot to cast their votes for their respective choices of their political parties. No, they need to be engaging the people. Let people know that so many things are happening in social media. So, and, 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 and let me tell uh, Nigerians that this is one of the elections that I have observed that we not see people play football on the streets, unlike before, five years ago. Eight years ago, sometimes when we come out to observe elections in Imo, you will see young people playing football on the street of Oweri, but this time around, we did not even experience it. So I think the speculation and the social media propaganda is, is, is destroying the image of, 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 of so many people that are so concerned about participating in the election. And this, this issue of propaganda has made so many people not to come down to the state and come and observe the conduct of election. We did not even see some of these uh, foreign observers in Nemo states. Observers are not even much in Nemo states because of social media propaganda and all those things. I can comfortably tell you that we were in all the necessary or relevant stakeholders meetings that are held in Nemo in Oweri. We did not see the faces of the, those people that we used to see in Abuja and in all those other states. So, so, so if the, that you'll be hearing is just propaganda. Okay, if the social media, you know, propagate propaganda, you know, you know, against the election in uh, Imo State, why didn't the media, the, 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 the media in that state, by the, owned by the government, educate the people that all these are lies and they can come out and vote? Why was they, why were they not used properly to, 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 to inform the people? Information is key here, don't you think? That is, that is the angle that I just pointed out, that the government itself have a very serious role to play. Maybe the role they play, maybe they're feeling other man that uh, we don't care. Uh, we are preparing for election. Everybody is busy. But they don't know that the, the kind of image that this propaganda, is, the propaganda flies even more than the, the facts. Yes, in fact, more than the facts. And if you don't be the state government alone, there are so many people that have been given positions in the state government to handle all this, all this, uh, to take to take care of these challenges, these people may not be doing much. These people may be claim they are doing much. I you know most of these our government officials, they don't go through what is going on in the media. They are just only interested when the election is around the corner. They want to win election. They don't give attention to what is going on in the media. So it is appealing. So it is it is highly disappointing. So I want to say that propaganda. Our speculation is destroying the image of our society. As so many people are key into it. If I did not come down to Imo State, I wouldn't be here to tell you that this is exactly what is going on in Imo State. And to be frank with you, the election is supposed to start by 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock in some areas. Election started as early as 9 a.m. In so many of the pulling, pulling units that we visited, it started as early as as, as 9 a.m. And we did not even experience anything like militarization. Unlike what I was even anticipating that Imo State is going to be flooded with militaries, flooded with security agencies. But these militaries and security agencies, they were stationed 
in the rural areas, not even in the urban areas. If you are moving into the municipal, in the urban areas, you don't even see security. And there are some even pulling units where there is no security. And the elections were going on there very, very peaceful, smoothly, and very, very conducive. But there are some pulling units you go and see some security. People were not organized. But when we go there, we engage with them, we interact with them, we will tell them why they need to put themselves together. And people were not even properly guided on how to conduct themselves during the election. We know how many people that we engage on how to cast their vote, people that we engage on how to seek for assistance, people that we engage on how to go about the conduct of the election. So many police units, even their party agents, are scared of putting on their badges, their tags. We were the ones that are also engaging them. Why they need to put on their badges, their tags on their chest to identify the party that they are representing at each of the pulling units. So these are the things that we're able to do in the state. So the sensitization may be on or we are carried out, but people at the grassroots level, the people at the rural area, they are not properly sensitized. So I don't know what the local government administrators, even the parties that are also participating in this election are, are, are really doing. Because if you have a party that also have a presence in the world, in the local government, in the polling units, these are the things they should be doing. They're supposed to be enlightening their party agents. If you come to the polling unit, put on your tag. Let us know the party that you are representing. So these are the things that are bringing challenges in the polling units. We have so many polling units are not are not properly uh, 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 carrying out the disconnect of the election properly. They are not happy. And they are not also guided. So there are also crises in some of those areas. So our intervention, our enlightenment, our engagement, and our sensitization really helped in so many cleanups that we visited today. Indeed, Chief Obin Nwaka, I'm sure your sensitization has sort of helped, you know, reduce the voter apathy in Imo State, Director General Committee of Youth on Mobilization and Sensitization. It's just us via Zoom from Oweri. Thank you so much. We now come back to the studio where Nick Dazang is waiting. You've listened to him. He said it is all social media propaganda, mm -hmm. you know, over the you know, sealed hotels, booked hotels, and all that in media. And the, the, the sensitization to the people that sort of brought them out to vote. Yes, but you, you see when, when, uh, when other people resort to the social media to do propaganda, others have a responsibility to use the conventional media to talk to the people. You know, and uh, that is where we seem to fail. And uh, we, we, we need to be very proactive at all times. We need to recognize that, yes, the social media are not regulated. They are not manned, they are not, uh, manned by gatekeepers, like in, in the formal um, uh, media or the conventional media, where you have reporters, they are professionally trained, Whatever they do is informed by certain ethical standards and canons of their profession. And then they have editors who now check whatever they report for fact, for, for test, for, for, for being libel free, and so on. And then uh, it, it, it goes through a, a chain, a chain of uh, gatekeepers, editors who go through before it is finally presented. And then even the presenter is as educated as, as, as is also an editor who goes through before he presents, for mm. example. Now, in the social media, we don't have these checks, you know? And, and people are not moderated mm. by such concerns as ethics. Yeah, that's why there's been a lot of calls, you a, know, to, a, yes, to, to so monitor the social media. It's an old commerce. Indeed. So if you are dealing with a situation like that, you also have to resort to the conventional media and where these things media, uh, yes, yeah. and the traditional media where these things obtain and present your facts. Look, this is the situation. Because there was a, a, a letter that was trending, that was purportedly written, for example, by the Imo State government to the, the, the Association of Hotel Owners mm. in the in the state saying that that they were going to pay for all the hotel rooms. Yeah, I saw that on the and Twitter. Exactly. So if, <laughs> if something like that was trending and you did not, re, re, you do not refute it, you did not correct it, 
then people will run with it because that is what is what is trending. Yes, indeed, Mr. Nick Zaga, you remain seated there, and um, Chief Obina Waka is still also waiting for me. Now, let's join our correspondent, Timipri O'Hare, INEC correspondent in Balsa, is joining us from Yenogwa via Zoom. Timipri, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Good evening. Evening. Uh, let, let's have your, 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 your take on, on, on how far the elections in uh, uh, Bielsa is going on. And um, uh, we've been talking about voter apathy and all that. The results have started trickling in. So what is the mood like in Yenogwa? Okay, Yenogwa is calm. And earlier on, the returning officer, the state returning officer for INEC, and by us state professor Farouk just announced that results, the announcement will continue to tomorrow because if it, just one local government has submitted their results and tomorrow they'll resume collation at the collation center, the Mahmoud Yakubu Media Center. But generally the election was peaceful. Voters in Bayasa State came out to cast their ballot. And um, although there were some pockets of complaint of uh, violence, but the security agency, they were on ground to, to forestall such a breach of the peace at the various polling units. People came out to vote. And also in the cause of the, the election, there was a boat mishap carrying election material to Southern Ijo. But luckily, no life was lost. Um, just the materials, the, the valuables that got missing. And also, uh, there was the, the kidnap of one of the um, SPO going to Amasoma at the eve of the election. But luckily, he has also regained his freedom. So far, the, the atmosphere in Egoa is calm and is peaceful. Everybody has, they are seated waiting to hear the announcement of results as it trickles in. Okay, 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 to me, pray. I'm still going to stay with you because, um, uh, you know, Bayelsa is sort of a peculiar state with hard to reach areas. You know, when do you think results from those areas will be will, 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 will come into the state? Just like you said, Bayelsa is, uh, is peculiar because of our terrain. We have to travel like four or five hours to some local government, like grass local government area. But hopefully, from tomorrow morning, from this from 10 a.m. Just like the returning officer has said, results will start trickling in from those uh, local government areas of the state. Okay, we, we talked about vote buying and, you know, voter apathy. Was there any incidents of vote buying in Bielsa or any arrest of people who have bought votes? Uh, in the course of my monitor, we didn't see that, but people came out to vote. Probably they wanted a change. People came out to vote. There, I didn't notice the polling unit I visited. There was I didn't notice any vote, uh, voter apathy. Okay, thank you so much to Yupi O'Hare. She's an INEC correspondent. Uh, she joined us via Zoom from Bielsa. We'll get back to you maybe during the day. Thank you so much. All right, thank you very much. Well, back here in the studio, Nick Dazank, 1999. Mm. Nigerians fought hard for this democracy that we are, you know, we are enjoying, I should say. But what happened along the way that Nigerians feel that democracy isn't working for them? Well, I, I think um, over, over, the, over the years, there has been um, a systematic decline in the deliverance of good governance. And... Um, and that has also reflected in the decline in, in the turnout of voters. I, I had said this before, and I think it will become like a refrain, which is that by 1999, when the democracy project started, there was a conscious effort to link the democracy project with deliverance of good governance. There was a conscious effort to say, look, yes, democracy has arrived. Democracy is good. People can express themselves. Uh, their bottled up feelings can be spewed out. But this project can only survive if we are able to tie it with improving the lot of Nigerians. And that government had the foresight to say, okay, let us encourage not only the, the, the center, the, the government at the center 
to deliver good governance. But the governors also who are very close to the citizens to compete in order to deliver good governance. And that gave rise to the idea of the media going to tour the states to see for themselves the performance of these governors. And that also gave rise to assessing the performance of these governors and then instituting an award for those that were able to do well. You know, and in the, in, in the first set of awards, I remember the, the awards that were given, the, the best governor, based on the assessment of the committee of the media talk, was Peter Odili of River State, mm. followed by late Abubakar Audu of, uh, of Koji State. And what I observed particularly in Koji, because I was in Koji, about late Abubakar Audu, was that because I and a number of uh, colleagues, journalists, sat him down. And we observed that even in places where Audu was not voted, he did not enjoy support during the election. Those were the places he targeted and provided, you know, uh, amenities to. And it, it got to a point that one of the governors, who is contemporary, yeah. was so impressed by the performance of Audu that he called us and said, is it, this is what I'm hearing about what Audu is doing in his state. Is it true? And we confirmed to him that yes. And I was with a colleague who was his classmate at the University of Ibadan. So he, he said, so how can I do what Audu is doing? Then we now said, why don't you go and meet Audu? We are not Audu. And he did. And one of the things we, we confirmed was that he now asked Audu, ah, you, you've done this, you've done this, you've done this, done this. He said, yes. How did, you, how did you do it? He said, with the money that they give us from Abuja. And I recall, too, that in, in the course of that tour, President Olusegun Obasanjo visited Borno State. There was a particular local government chairman, I think a Konduga local government, who was able to do so many wonderful things. To the extent that Obasanjo now asked him the same question. Chairman, I went round and saw these projects. Where did you get money? He said, I got money from the money you sent to us from Abuja. So you, you see, when we did, we, 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 we did that tour and we were able to assess the governors, they were awarded based on their performance and then it uh, triggered a competition between the governors, yes. you know, to continue to deliver good governance. But unfortunately, after that first time, I think mm. it was after the first time, Obasanjo's first time, the, that assessment was not sustained. Okay. And then, you know, everybody just relaxed. Okay. And then also, I think, if you had somebody at the center who lays premium on, 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 on deliverance of good governance, on, on, on performance, and he sets the tone, then others will follow. Will follow, exactly. So I, I think we, we, we need also to go back to having at the center people who are doing very well. And then also even in the States, yes. there are, I can give you, for example... Mr. Nick, I, I have to pause you there I, okay. because I have to join Kinsley on a new... He's joining us from the INEC office in Oweri. Kinsley, what's going on? Thank you for having me. Uh, we are waiting for the announcement of uh, EMO State 2023 of cycle governorship election. It, it is no longer a news that uh, voting has ended in every polling unit. Uh, and thereafter, a resource we are taking to lo various local government headquarters for collation. Finally, attention is now shifted behind me here. Uh, Professor Chukuibano Media Center, right inside the uh, INA headquarters here in Owere. Uh, everybody is getting set for the commencement 
of the announcement of the election result, local government by local government, by the returning officer of the election. Though it was scheduled, the announcement was scheduled to commence by 10 p.m., but as you can see the time now, uh, the letter shifted it to an unknown time. But we are very much on ground to update Nigerians with every uh, proceedings of the whole uh, event. Oh, the results are announced. How long will it take for the results to be announced? How long will it take? Will it go through the night or in a few hours or in a few minutes? Like I said before, it was scheduled to start by 10 p.m., but later it didn't start, so we are waiting. So from the signals we are having now or we are receiving, it may start at any moment from now. But for sure, we are on ground waiting to update you and Nigerians with every proceeding that will take place here tonight. We'll be following you and be waiting for you to link up, link up with us when the result is about to be announced. Thank you. Mr. Comment. Also, I've started coming out. <laughs> yeah, because the, the elections were concluded in good time. Yes. So naturally, you know, the, the, the coalition will start in earnest. And, and therefore, by, by, by uh, tomorrow afternoon, God willing, we should be able to know uh, the outcome of this, of this resource. But like I was saying, we, we need also, you see, the, the, there are also governors, one or two governors, in this whole desert, this arid desert of non-performance, of non-delivery of good governance. There are also oases of hope. Sometimes when I buy daily trust, you know what gladdens me is to see the structures that Governor Zulum is building. And in the face of insurgency, he's building schools. Oh. And you keep wondering, there are states in which there are no insurgencies, but they are not even bu bu building huts. <laughs> that is okay, the tragedy. So you, you see, we, we, what I'm trying to, the point I'm trying to yes. underscore is that there is also failure of leadership, hmm. but there is also failure of followership. Okay. Holding leadership yes, accountable. Yes, we, we don't hold our leaders to account. Okay. Also, we don't celebrate those who are doing well, and we don't chastise those who are not doing well. Hmm. I think that is why they, they, they don't have any commitment. But assuming, you know, if somebody is doing well and you celebrate him, it will encourage him to do more, and it will encourage others to copy him. Yes. But the trouble with us is that when somebody is busy looting the treasury, we are busy celebrating him on at that, our own expense. On that note, Mr. Nick Dazanga, I have to post you again there because we have to join Emmanuel Njoku, election observer, public policy analyst, and director, Democracy and Governance Connected Limited. He's joining us via Zoom from Lokoja. We just spoke with uh, Kinsley Onaniu in Imbo State. The results are ready, just waiting to be announced. What's the situation like in Kogi? Well, frankly, um, I, I am not at the collection center, uh, but so we're expecting, we have some people who are in next staff and we told them when they are ready to um, start making announcements that we will be there. But it's good to also note that as we speak right now, at least we are following the results as they are being uploaded on the IREV, and about 86% of the results have been uploaded on the, on the IREV. This is a positive development, and uh, this, is, this is good for INEC, especially as they need to at this time redeem their image and uh, you know, try to correct the wrongs and the, uh, the wrongs of the 2023 20, February 25th presidential election where the IREV uh, did not work. So this is positive and we are hanging on here and when they start we will be informed 
And so we'll leave the Situation Room and try to join them at the collection center. Yes, I just hear that the, the, the Imo State situation is not result, you know, announcement is the collation of results that will begin before they collect the results and, and, and announce it. Now, still, I'm going to ask you this question I threw to you earlier. What is the mood like in Kogi? Is it still stable? The mood is stable. Everywhere is um, calm, uh, very calm. Uh, within the city center, everywhere is calm. Everybody's everybody's probably waiting to to see what is happening. And I mean, I would expect that probably the political parties should have their own situation room. So at this time, I would expect that they should have been doing their own parallel tabulation with the from EC8As that have been uploaded on the IREV, as that will give them a feel as to uh, what the outcome of the election will be. Uh, but we've not had anything, we've not seen anything, and so we're just watching and um, waiting for INEC to start the state coalition, uh, which will now lead to the announcement of results. I do not know if they are going to do that all night. We would expect that they should do that all night. Uh, but with what has happened in these five local government areas, uh, I doubt if there is any urgency as it is right now. Well, but we still need to know what the outcome of this process in the other, um, in the other 16 local governments is before we will await our next decision, which they said will be in the next 24 hours. And they said this like three hours and four hours ago. So, so the yeah, the mood is calm. Okay, what's the uh, security situation like? Is it heightened in expectation of anything happening? No, 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 nothing, nothing of such. I mean, uh, so nothing of such. Everywhere is calm. So, 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 you, so you need to. So, which we moved from one local government, uh, we moved to about three local governments during while the election was going on. You know, it is 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 almost impossible for you to try to you know carry out any criminal act in in, in Kogi State. For every few kilometers you drive, you will meet a strong faced military checkpoint. And before they will let you pass, you must present your your the tag given to you by INEC that shows you are an accredited observer or accredited uh, media person. And they don't just look at the ID card. So you know, in the past. People just go ahead and print uh, ID cards and put up their passports there. But this INEX uh, 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 tax for observers and media personnel this time has a barcode, just a barcode, just just right there. And, and, and the military personnel who were mounting these roadblocks have been informed and taught that any time you get to any, any particular checkpoint, the military personnel will use their phone to scan your barcode, which will not take them to the INEC INEC official website showing your name and your and your and your and your and your passport, you know, to be sure that your, your ID card is not fake. So there is so much presence of security around that I do not see how a few criminals will want to try to play for it. They'll probably get shot. So I don't see that happening in the States. And we hope it doesn't happen actually. <laughs> so really, what, really one thing that I, I can't wrap around my head is what if what if those people who pre-filled the, the resource sheets were successful? What if? What would have happened? So, uh, so you, know, you know, in all honesty, I think whatever they were planning to do was actually a dumb move. Because if you understand the process, and you know, that's the, that's the, that's the impunity that we see among some of our political actors. The, the Electoral Act clearly stipulates that whatever numbers it puts on in your uh, form EC8A, which is the polling unit result, must match with the number of accredited persons on the beaver, in the beavers. So if they had pre-filled the, 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 the form EC8As without equally, of course, they can't even, uh, they can't even load the beavers with with uh, with uh, data of uh, people that will be accredited. So if they have pre-filled, how were they how were they hoping to match that with the uh, number of people that are supposed to be accredited on the beavers? So what that means is that if this process had managed due to collusion and corruption through some uh, INEC officers, if they had managed to get this into the collision uh, uh, result sheets and make an announcement. All of these things, if it gets to court, would have thrown, would have been thrown away. But like you are aware, 
So probably this is their plan. Maybe part of the plan is that by the time they go to court, like we've witnessed in the series of court cases as the judgments that came out in the past in the past two weeks. Most times when people go to court, they, they don't really look at the case in its merit to talk about, I mean, who won or who didn't win and, and what is supposed to be. Instead, they talk about technicalities and talk about, you know, things that are not really as regards uh, your popularity in the, in the contest. So probably that was the plan and probably that's what, would have been, what, that, that's what would have happened. But so this thing shows also the resolve and the commitment of citizens to democracy and to, to, to having credible elections. Because it was the citizens in the particular unit where we first got that report that insisted that before the election was start, that the poll clerks we need to do the needful by presenting all the materials they came to that polling unit to all the observers and all the party agents. They insisted, in as much as the poll clerks tried to, uh, tried to resist, but they insisted. And when they presented it, I mean, behold, you see the, that the result has already been pre-filled. You know, so, I mean, it's, 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 it's quite um, shameful, but it's commendable that citizens could rise to the occasion to ensure that they expose such electoral fraud. So it's a good thing. Okay, Mr. Emmanuel Njoku, election observer, public policy analyst, and director of democracy and governance connected development. You'll still development. be staying with us, but I need to come back to the studio to ask Nick the same question. I saw you, you know, smicking there. <laughs> yes, I, I was saying that, that, that it would have collapsed anyway, yeah. because first of all, you now have to get the, the party agents to sign the result sheet at the end of sorting the votes, counting. You now enter the, 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 the outcome of the result in the result sheet. And then you now have to get the party agents to sign for you before you tear off and give to them and the security agencies. So at that point, it will collapse. But even if it does not collapse, by the time you now take the, the so-called pre-filled result sheet with the accredited number of voters and the beavers to the World Collection Center, there will be discrepancies and it will collapse there. Okay. Yes. So, I mean... But can you rule out compromise? What I'm saying is that it will be challenging for you to compromise everybody along the line. Okay. You know? And then, you know, the, the Electoral Act now gives, empowers polling agents. And that is why we keep telling political parties that before the conduct of any election, when you appoint agents, train them. Because the law now empowers your polling agent to cite the sensitive materials at the point of distribution, mm. at the vault of the CBN, at the state office, at the local government uh, office, at the ward level, and then at the polling unit. The, particularly at the polling unit and at the, 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 the distribution at the CBN. The, the, the agents where your representative are entitled to cite, they can ask that they want to cite and even take the serial numbers. Okay. They are now entitled by law to do that. And then at the end of the conduct of the election at that polling unit, mm. you will now enter the result because you sort it out in public view. You sort the, the votes counted. You will now count them according to the candidates and the political parties. Mm. You will now announce it. You now enter it into the form EC8A. You will enter the same result also into the form EC60E. That's the postal form. Hmm. So, you know, there are hurdles that if you, you are able to scale this, you may not scale the next the one. The next one. And then, you know, the, the accreditation done by the beavers, because you are dealing with, in a poly unit, there are four officers, you know? And the people doing the, 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 the accreditation are different from those who are, are doing the sorting and counting. Mm. So it means you now have to compromise everybody. everybody. Which is not possible. And then compromise also those doing the collation, which will be very challenging. And, and, but what is key is always to have poly agents that are trained and that are loyal to you. And who, at the end of the day, will collect they will now make sure that it is the correct result that is entered into the form EC8A before it is snapped 
and transmit it. Okay, now let's talk about vote buying, you know, and arrest of, you know, people who have violated the Electoral Act and, you know, the penalties out there. In, in most cases, we've had this discussion so many times on, on other forums. In most cases, when they're arrested, big people come to release them. Yes. When will the, the thing to do also is, you, you see, you don't just uh, continue arresting the small fries. How deep Make sure do you, need you, to you, go? you 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 need also to 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 get up to their sponsors, the high-profile perpetrators of this crime, and beyond that, you also need to have a law in place, and that is why we've been since 2007, we've been canvassing for the setting of the establishment of an electoral offences commission and tribunal. So that it will deal with this kind of cases. Once you have somebody, you apprehend him, you know, you 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 you, you do the investigation thoroughly. You now take him, you arraign him before the tribunal. He's found guilty. He's sentenced. By the time you sentence people like that, and you publicize it, you give publicity to let people see that people are being sanctioned. It will deter people, and then make sure that. Once in a while, you get the high-profile people, and they also get them dealt with, and then they, it it will stop. But once you you know that, that there are no sanctions, there will be impunity. Mm. People will think, okay, I can do this and get away with it. Mm. And now, they, from from vote buying, they are going into pre-filling of result sheets. Okay. So we we need also to continue doing that, and then also to look at. How did they get these resources in the first place? In the instance? first place, yes. That's the million dollar question. And then what happened to the color coding that Anik used to do? Because at a point in time, when uh, Professor Jega was chairman, in fact, one of the challenges we had when we were conducting the Alhambra off cycle governorship election, <laughs> in which uh, there were challenges with, I think, Idemili South, local government. It was because the 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 the, 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 the uh, uh, sensitive materials were color coded, you know, uh, as supposed to be in the past. And the EO, who, who he had avoided all the trainings that other EOs were going through, he thought that it was business as usual. So by the time the election was supposed to be conducted, he opened all the packages of the sensitive materials. Then he saw something he could not understand. Hmm. And he was suffering from high blood pressure. The, his blood pressure just shot oh. through the roof. And then he took medication with a view to lowering the blood pressure so that he can now fathom what had happened. So if you change these things at random, you know, assuming somebody went and got an idea of how the resource sheet is going to look like and he prints it, Oh. And then you now present him with something else. Okay. Then whatever he wanted to do will collapse. So those were some of the techniques that the commission, you know, devised. Yes. So once in a while, you change the, you color code, the, you color code the, the, the sensitive materials. You change the colors. Yes. You change the serial numbers. But can it be done at the last minute? Yes, it can be done. Okay. It's not rocket science. It's not rocket science. And I, it's a good thing that INEC is improving by the day with each election. That well, now, now let's take, quickly take this report. Former President Dr. Goodluck Ibele Jonathan has expressed concern over the conduct of off-cycle elections in Nigeria. The former president, Biosa State Governor, and the former Minister of State Petroleum Resources, who is also the APC candidate, however, commend the Independent National Electoral Commission for the coordinated and orderly conduct of the election. Ibinimi Zitimiola brings us a compilation of the election in Biosa State. We'll back after that. The former president of Nigeria, Dr. Goodluck Jonathan, alongside his wife, Kasta Balot, in World 13, Unit 39, Utweke, Ogbea, local government area, where he expressed concern over off-cycle elections in Nigeria. If we continue with this trend of off-season elections based on the interpretation of our laws by uh, the judicial officers, it will come to a time that the presidential election in Nigeria may be off-season. I will use this unique opportunity to plead with the National Assembly that we need to block 
this office in elections. It's a very odd, it's not a global best practice. From Kolokumo Pokuma local government area, the candidate of the PDP and incumbent governor, Doye Diri, commended INEC for the seamless process. Very seamless, very fast. If it continues like this, I want to believe that the INEC is a problem on not only their facilities, the training of the personnel and the handling the process. Similarly, former Minister of State Petroleum Resources and APC candidate Temi Pre Silva speaks on the assessment of election after voting in his hometown of Boma in Brass local government area. So far, in, uh, in my unit, uh, things are going on very well. And around the state, we also uh, are following. And there is a lot of violence, and in some cases, uh, it is believed by our people that we are running the election not against PDP but against uh, security. But uh, we are continuing uh, uh, the situation. The election was generally peaceful in Bayelso State, with sorting and counting on the way by the pooling offices and coalition of resources is in progress. Ebinimi Zitimiola, NTA News. No. Well, you're welcome back to the Off-Cycle Election Studio, and we're live on the network service of the NTA. I still have my guest in the studio and those on Zoom, and uh, Mr. Emmanuel Njoku, Election Observer, Public Policy Analyst and Director, Democracy and Governance Connected Development. You, you just heard what, what the former president said, that um, we, we, we need to stop this off-cycle elections because it's not well, uh, it's not part of the global best practice, democracy practice around the world. Do you think that is possible with, 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 with these off-cycle elections? With, with, is there any way that these elections can be brought back to the four-year cycle? I'll mute yeah, your so audio, yes. please, yes. Yeah. So His Excellency President Gulam Jonathan has said that, but then whose tenure are you going to cut short to make that adjustment happen? Is it a those state government that will be having their own election next year? Are you going to take away the one year plus from their tenure to be able to align, to be able to have a general election? In fact, some of us at some point, we actually even feel that having um, having a, a staggered elections should even be encouraged in Nigeria because we see that you see that when, because of the, the 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 population of our security personnel across the country it is just not enough to provide enough security across uh, the country when we are having general elections and that's why you see the madness we experience like we saw in the 2023 general election across the country because we understand the nigerian police has just less than about 360,000 uh, personnel across the country so they, they they can hardly provide enough security across the country and from what has happened today in kogi state is a testament that the critical uh, the critical uh, ingredient we need to see that we'll have a successful election, election is security. So, I mean, INE could have prepared as much as they wanted. Like I said before, civil societies can do all the voter education and campaigns. But our, the political elites have, have a culture of violence. And if we don't provide enough security in the country, they will mess up the whole election and destroying our lives and properties. So I'm even of the opinion that uh, we, should, we should stagger our elections, even the general elections, personally my opinion, that we should even stagger our elections. So take, for instance, today uh, in, in Kogi State here yeah, and in the other two other states, INEC deployed nine extra resident electoral commissioners plus the, plus the one in the state. That's making it 10 resident electoral commissioners in the state to support and, uh, and, uh, and oversight uh, what the state resident electoral commissioners will, will be doing and the level of deployment. So, yeah, really, I feel that um, INEC uh, uh, may, may, do, do, does not really have the capacity sometimes to have all these elections happen at the same time. I mean, managing all the National Union of Road Transport Workers, managing the Maritime uh, Association, the security personnel. I mean, it just becomes a total mess and violence all across the country. So why that may be His Excellency Good Luck Jonathan's opinion, personally, I have of the opinion that we should even encourage uh, staggered elections. I mean, who does it hurt? 
Does it hurt any person that we had a kitty an election in, in earlier in 2022 and we are having uh, Bayelsa, Imo and uh, and Kogi today and we'll be having a do and um, a do and a do and I think on those states yes. uh, in the coming months. Does it really hurt anybody? It doesn't. I mean, what matters is that uh, the democracy is stable and, uh, and we've been constant uh, in this uh, in this democracy. Yes, democracy is stable. But do you think we need this type of security if democracy is really working? If people are getting dividends of democracy? So, 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 so you can't, uh, no matter how much you want to plan and no matter how much effort INEC wants to make, I mean, the 2022 Electoral Act, if you look at it closely and you look at that, 20, you look at the 2023 general election closely, I mean, devoid of emotionalism and uh, sentimentalism, you will agree with me that that election was in many ways far better than every other elections we've been having in this country. And what gave rise and birth to that partly was the Electoral Act 2022. But yet, no matter how much you prepare, no matter how much laws you want to make, the politicians and their culture of violence, they will continue to do what they do in the desperation to get into office because of the benefits of getting into office. We've seen situations where someone who could barely pay for a two-bedroom rent, flat, in, 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 in not even in Abuja or Lagos, I mean, in smaller cities across the country, wins the state house of assembly election, and in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a flash of the hand, the person is driving an SUV that is worth hundreds of millions and is driving, moving into big houses. It just shows that what they gain and benefit in office is too attractive. So, till we decide to cut down cost of governance and probably have our politicians go in there to serve and probably place them on basic salaries just like our lecturers or maybe our medical professionals, they will continue to be desperate. They will continue to invest hugely in violence and vote trading and vote buying because to them, they don't see it as spending money. They see it as business. They see it as an investment that when they commit this money, once they go in, they will get it out. I know somebody who was living in an apartment where the person where the person was is paying rent and this person was running for um, a house, uh, a federal house of uh, representatives. At the point when the person was being served with notice just before the election, all the person was begging was that they should just hang on that once he wins his his, his election as at march 18th uh, 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 uh no february 25th uh, national assembly election that once he wins the election that he will pay for that property and that property at that time was what about 140 million naira this is someone who cannot afford to pay his three years um his his, his annual rent of about three million naira somewhere in abuja but this is someone telling you that if he wins this election that he's going to immediately pay about 140 million naira uh, for this property what does that tell you it tells you that politicians will always be desperate and they will do everything possible to get into the office so far as these offices are as juicy as they are and is the easiest way to make huge sums of money and become rich probably forever if they manage just as well so we cannot no matter how much we try make this happen and that is the reason why we need security to deter these people to outgun the criminals that they want to deploy for citizens to go out to so were you not bothered you know, before this election, when, you, when I watch the TV and watch news and watch analysts discuss the election, you'll be wondering, I mean, is, is, is Kogi or Imo states, is it somehow we're going to be drafted into Gaza or the Hamas? I mean, are we, in, are, are we at war? What is happening? But then that is the only thing you can do. So our citizens can go out and do what ordinarily is just a civic duty, to just go and cast your vote. But if you don't provide this security, People will die. Properties will be lost. Families will lose their, their, the heads of their families. But you can see that the election has happened in a place like Kogi State. If you listen to the commissioner of police uh, in, uh, of Kogi State two days ago, I think on Friday or on Thursday, I'm not too sure, when they asked him that where, which places are the flashpoints in Kogi State, the commissioner said that every part of Kogi State is a flashpoint. <laughs> And that is the reason why they are deploying security massively. 
But then this is a Kogi state that in 2019, you, you will agree with me, there was a lot of shooting and a lot of violence. But we just had an election in Kogi state. And to the best of my knowledge, apart from the local, local government area uh, council, uh, local government area chairman, who they said sadly passed away early hours of the election day due to hypertensive and I think cardiac arrest from what they have said, who has been buried. I am not aware of any person that, is, that has been killed in this election. So thanks to our security personnel, and frankly, they were also very professional because a lot of um, stakeholders were, were, were scared that these security people will probably be biased and they will be deployed to be used in favor of one candidate or the other. We didn't get such reports. Instead, we understood from our observers that the unarmed security personnel were deploying in this to ensure orderliness. So why the ones within the perimeter spacing with the military, you know, ensure that they controlled vehicular movement. Because criminals who go to polling units to 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 I mean to 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 destroy ballots. They, they don't just uh, disappear and appear or teleport into a polling unit. You know they must move from point A to point B. So the level of deployment we saw of security personnel in this election made it impossible for these people to mobilize violence and you know I mean I mean kill citizens who ordinarily should be protected to carry out this civic duty. So yes, I'm of the opinion that will continue to deploy more security and, if possible, have staggered elections. And if you look at history, it shows that our staggered elections, like we saw in AKT and Oshun, were way better. And that was what gave a lot of Nigerians the hope that 2023 election was going to be good. In fact, it was the AKT and Oshun election that illustrated the interest and awareness of most Nigerians who went all out to try and pick up their PVCs mm. to participate in that election. But sadly, what happened as regards IREF happened. So what we've seen today, I believe, will be some sort of reassurance and hopefully probably build back the lost trust that citizens have in INEC and our electoral process. There's one thing that, you know, plays out during elections on Kogi, and that is the role of ethnic city tribal politics you know we've seen the candidates coming from different from the Kogi East, Kogi North, Kogi West you know on the ballot how does this play out actually? Well um, in this election uh, in as much as that is not particularly the survey we are looking at for but for conversations we had we understood that some of those things will come into play because you hear people talking about uh, the governor of the state is from this region, is from this senatorial zone where they have just about six local governments. Why this other candidate is in this uh, senatorial zone where they have uh, about I think eleven uh, local or uh, fourteen local government areas. Uh, all of that, all of that, yeah, were, it was things we heard. But well, uh, till we we'll start seeing the result, then we'll, that's when we can tell if that actually uh, played a role in this election and the voting pattern or not. But as we speak, I cannot say. Uh, particularly, I'm also not from Kogi State, so I am not very uh, conversant with uh, the tribes and the activities. We're just looking at the data. We are looking at uh, uh, local government areas that have a lot of population, the Deki, the, the Kinas, the, uh, the, the, the Okenes, you know, the, uh, the the local governments with a lot of population and looking at how that will play a role uh, uh, in the uh, when the results start, when, when they start announcing the results. So, uh, of course, uh, as you know, when they're announcing the results, people always look out for those uh, local governments with a lot of population because some local governments in Kogi State, uh, like the Tekinas, there are some other local governments that if you put six, seven local governments together, their population is not even as much as one local government uh, from what we've seen. So, well, as regards the ethnic part of it and tribal part of it, uh, that's not one of the surveys we, we are looking at. Uh, so I would not be able to speak in details about that. So what is the data saying? <laughs> about what? About the elections. You said you're collecting data. What is the data saying? No, no. I say we are looking based on available data. data. Available okay. data because INEC put out the data of the local governments with, uh, so you look at the populations of this local government, and then of course, when the result starts coming in, given that, uh, if you remember what I said, I said a place like Tekina has uh, the population of 
of registered voters in some of these local governments, uh, if you put six or seven other, some other local governments together, they still don't make up as much as the population of one or two uh, other local governments uh, in Kogi State. So, of course, that will play a role in when these results come in. You know, so when those, so, so those local governments are local governments to look out for. You know, so uh, but what I cannot say is if those local governments will have uh, any kind of impact directly or indirectly on the tribe or or the the zones where the candidates that participants that are contested for these elections uh, come from. Okay, Emmanuel Njoku, hang in there. I will come back to you. Let me now come back to the studio where Nick Dagzang is uh, seated with me. Nick Dagzang, President Goodnock, a very Jonathan, for the first time, for the first time add his views. What do you make of that? Well, with uh, due respect to His Excellency, um, uh, uh, let me say or observe that perhaps he's worried that the off-cycle elections are becoming too many. Uh, but uh, the fact is that uh, these off-cycle uh, elections are also being conducted according to law. And if they are not conducted, they will also give rise to certain constitutional crises. He also called for legislation. Yes, but in the absence of the legislation, you have to go by what the law says, the extant, the, the subsisting law. So to avert a constitutional crisis uh, and, and, and to, to ensure that people have representation or governance, they are, you must hold elections, you know, so that if there is a vacancy, <laughs> Uh, maybe arising from uh, a court case or arising from resignation or arising from death, you must hold elections. That is either as off-season or off-cycle or by-election. Yeah. So, uh, and, and uh, let me also say that uh, from what we have seen in the history of the commission, this off-cycle and by-elections also have their own values. They allow INEC to, 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 to test run their innovations. Experiment. To experiment, you know, again, using small elections. And then uh, they now escalate or extrapolate those innovations to bigger um, elections. Let me give you an example. The IREF, that is the INEC Result Election Viewing Portal, uh, this first pilot was done in 20, uh, I think, August 2021 uh, in Nasarawa State when a by-election was being conducted to fill the vacancy for a member of the Nasarawa State House of Assembly. That was the first time that the, the, the RF and the, the beavers were, were used. And there were, there, there were challenges with them. But by and by, you know, Anne kept keep uh, perfecting these innovations, using these off-cycle governorship elections, picking or climaxing at, at the Oshun uh, governorship election before the general election. Okay. And it is, it is the introduction of these innovations, the Beavers and the IREF, that also, you know, elicited the confidence of a lot of Nigerians to come out and vote in the 2023 general elections because these measures introduce more transparency to the process. So these off-cycle elections have their own importance uh, in the sense that they allow INEC, you know, to, to, to pilot their projects, to test run them. And also, I, I think it also makes an argument for staggering our elections. You know, in India, and, and we need, uh, uh, most of the time when we are conducting elections, to borrow good practices from other democracies. For example, uh, I'm told, you know, by some members of the South African Electoral Commission, okay. that there is a particular place in South Africa, uh, because of its challenges, it's like a kind of backwater. Okay. So if they are doing anything and they want to uh, assure themselves that it will work in other parts of South Africa that are more infrastructurally more developed, they will now pilot that particular innovation in that area. Yeah. So once it works there, 
they, it gives them confidence that it will work everywhere. Mm -hmm. So we, this, this is a good practice that we can also borrow. Mm -hmm. Which are the most challenges, ch challenging places in Nigeria? Yes. And you can see that these three states in which these off-cycle elections took, mm. took place or have taken place are some of the most challenging states in Nigeria in terms of insecurity, mm. in terms of challenging terrain. In fact, out of the eight local government areas in Bayelsa State, only two are on land. The other six are on water. On water. You know, and in Kojitu, I think about four or five local governments are riverine. And then they are far flung. You know, they, they, they are distant from local and the state capital. So they present for you a template for testing challenging elections. So that when you now are doing a national or, or general election and you have similar challenges, they will now have, you would have tested that kind of template before mm. so it, it, it does, doesn't become a strange thing so but uh, looking at also india which is what the, the biggest democracy in the world and it, it has one of the biggest populations and landmass what they do is that they stagger their elections mm. you hold the election at one point mm. or one section of the country after you have conducted it you keep the results you go to another one you do it. Yes, just like Emmanuel jo uh, Joko said that yes, it's, it's a the, good thing for democracy. Yes. It's a good thing for so politics. We, yes, we practice democracy, but we, we, in fact, there is a, a, a good argument for doing a democracy that is peculiar to our own challenges. Okay. Our, the challenges of America are not the same as ours. But we adopted their... But the, we the, adopted... The, yes. So we, they, they may not be looking at how to build roads. They have already built roads. They are thinking of conquering mass. Yes. There are people like Elon Musk who are helping them to deploy satellites yes. all over Conquer the place. space. Meanwhile, like we have never said, deployed yeah. anything. So if we want to deliver good governance, you must first of all construct the road from here to Meduguri or from here to Sokoto or from here to Lagos first before you think of deploying one, you know, one machine that can carry somebody from here <laughs> to Lagos in two minutes. So we also need, with due respect to the former president, to look at our own peculiarities. Okay. And I think that these of circuit elections serve us well. They serve us well to perfect our practices. And then in due course, you know, when uh, everything comes, the, the elections align. You know, when... When this case, the, the, and then we can now do the elections at the same time. Mm. Then, by then, the elections would have become routine. routine. You know, some of the challenges associated with elections will not be there. Mm. And then it will just be like what happens in the developed countries. You don't even know an election is taking place other than seeing experts mm. or pundits analyzing the outcome. Mm. Or the, 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 you know, it is then that you know that an election is taking place. But here, because we are still, you know, it's, it's still work in progress. Mm. That is why when we are doing an election, it's like you are preparing for war. Mm. Yes. <laughs> and if you don't do that, if you, for example, you don't do massive deployment, people will not have the confidence to come out and vote. Indeed. So yes. that, and it, it has been proven empirically yes. that there is a correlation between massive deployment in off-cycle elections and huge voter turnout. Yes, the indeed. figures are there, they speak for themselves. They speak for themselves, exactly. Let, let, Mr. Nick does, and let me bring in Emmanuel Njoku now, and uh, let's talk about the, the signing of peace accord by, 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 by candidates of political parties you know, across the state. Um, uh, they signed the, the, the peace accord. I think Imo State did not sign, but do you think that the signing of peace accord in a way help to stabilize the polity this time around? Your audio, un unplug your audio, please. Um, no, 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 I said no, it did not in any way uh, in make an impact in the stability of the, uh, the, the environment in this area. In fact, as a matter of fact, the, in Kogi State, the signing of the peace accord, I think it is the only, is only one of the candidates that was available to sign the peace accord. Uh, in as much as the peace accord is significant, you know, but it's not binding. It's not, it's not a contract of any sort. 
you know so there, there, there is no responsibility that is attached to signing the peace accord i feel it's just a show uh, I, I wish there is a way we can you know legislate mm -hmm. the peace accord and probably have uh, security agencies you know lead in this peace accord that way i mean the uh, people can be held responsible for the actions of their followers so it played no single role in this process i mean the people that that give the the, the reason why we had this table uh, election today is purely because of the role that the security agencies, the Nigerian police force, the Nigerian military, the DSS, the, and the civil defense, the role they play today is the reason why we, why we have the peace we had today. Okay, let's have your final words before I let you go. Well, um, well, I'm, I'm excited uh, that this thing has happened. Uh, for some of us, even before we I left Abuja to be in Kogi. In fact, people, some places are praying for our safety, you know, but thankfully, uh, none of that has happened. So I want to believe that Nigerians will leverage on what has happened today to continue to trust the process, knowing that elections are important for our democracy to grow. And one thing from what my Aga uh, Mr. Nick Dazan said there is that, yeah, democracy, we're practicing democracy, but our democracy doesn't have to exactly be like the British democracy. Mm -hmm. So we must have to make our democracy in a way that it will work for us in Nigeria. Doing the copy and paste democracy doesn't work, which is why I oppose with all due respect what the former president good luck jonathan said we we'll have to do what works for us so i will continue to grow and by the end of the elections tomorrow of course every election gives us an opportunity to see the gaps in the process so we we'll collate and make recommendations to INEC so we can have a stronger electoral laws that will further help us you know deepen our democracy through our elections okay thank you so much mr emmanuel njoku election observer public policy analyst and director of democracy and governance connected development he joined us via zoom from local jail. thank you so much i have to let you go i'm i'm sure it's going to be a long night but yes thank you yes we'll make up with you tomorrow <laughs> thank you <laughs> rest well thank you Mr. Nick Dazan, your final words, and um, how can we deepen democracy in Nigeria? Well, uh, uh, by way of, um, I want to correct one impression okay. uh, which Emma created or, or gave, which is that the peace accords are mere shows. They are not. Uh, a lot of work is usually done by that committee behind the scenes, okay. even before the photo opportunity of uh, the candidates coming to shake hands and to make pronouncements uh, from uh, experience. Uh, there, there are a number of elections that Ali could not have conducted without the intervention or the mediation of the Peace Committee mm. and other stakeholders like traditional rulers. Okay. So uh, I don't, for now, I don't want us to dismiss the work of these stakeholders and the National Peace Committee. They do a lot of work in the background, bringing these people together, bringing, uh, prevailing on them, and it's hard work. Mm. And they bring to bear their prestige, the, the respect that they have, you know, which is why uh, these people listen to them and, and, and make them to see reason why they should carry themselves in a peaceful manner. So sometimes when you see the, the, the photo finish, mm. you don't know the... the, the the, the tears and the sweat that went behind. And the sleepless nights. And the sleepless nights, I can tell you. Be because I've, I've been a witness to one or two of those things. Okay. Where I saw, we, we, we had even given up on whether we were going to conduct an election. And yeah. then with these efforts, strenuous efforts by this statesman, you know, the, the elections now come and take place. And they take place seamlessly, you know, to God's glory. So... Um, to, to that, I, I just thought I should, um, I should say that and, uh, and then also emphasize the fact that even though ANEC is the main driver of our elections, mm. we need, all stakeholders need to work together in concert. It is when we work together that we get very good results, as we have seen in the conduct of this election. I keep saying it. Everyone has a role to play, the voter, the observer, the polling agent, the annex staff, you know, and the, the, media. the media, civil society, 
we are we have roles to play and it, it's work in progress we have a lot of work to do we need to do a lot of education mm. of our people let our people know uh, what they ought to do and we need also to to educate even the political class in mm. their own self enlightened i think the the tragedy of what is happening is that the political class does not seem even to understand that it needs to carry itself in a certain way for it to continue to benefit from and remain relevant from, and to and to be relevant yes so that, that is where the challenge is other stakeholders appreciate their roles and they are carrying them out okay. but we need to bring pressure to bear on the political class to behave itself okay on that note mr nick dazang former director of water education independent national electoral commission thank you so much for staying with us through the night to you know talk about the off cycle election it's been a pleasure thank you very much and that's it don't forget the off cycle election studio will continue tomorrow thanks for being part of it i am jumai yusuf good night